Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have Serena Helen here today, and she is a holistic wellness coach, and she is amazing. She focuses on many different areas of mental health, and she focuses on self-care, self-love, emotional uh, problems, different things that we go through in life, different things like burnout and so many other things. But today I'm gonna to give the stage to Serena. She's gonna tell you a little about herself and what she does. And she's gonna talk about some issues that really affect a lot of people worldwide. So Serena, take it away. Tell everybody about yourself and what you do. And I'd love to hear some of the great tools and techniques that you were talking about previously. Of course, of course. I'm so excited to be here, Stacy. Thank you so much. So yeah, like you said, I'm a holistic wellness coach and specifically I'm a burnout recovery coach. So, and a lot of this experience of mine comes from learned experience. And it's something that I've been through for, I would say over a decade, I was burnt out. I was in a toxic marriage. I was, um, I was thin, but I wasn't actually healthy. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. I was, um, putting my, my, my husband at the time first, I was putting his needs first. Right. I was, um, basically everything to this person. And, um, I ended up just kind of like ignoring my symptoms. I started noticing I was feeling kind of sick or like, I wasn't feeling like myself and yeah. I had a lot of stress, like chronic stress that I was sort of addicted to. Yeah. Which about. And that ended up, um, causing me to become ill. So I actually, all of that stuff combined and manifested as illness in my body. So yeah. I ended up getting Hashimoto's, which is a chronic autoimmune illness. Yes. Try not to identify with this illness, but I do like to talk about it because I think it's important to be vulnerable and express yourself yes. so that people are brave enough to feel that vulnerability or the ability to be vulnerable. And yeah. so, because a lot of what we go through is like, you know, repressed emotion. And you and I were kind of talking about this. Yeah. And repressing what we're going through, like, and it could be like repressing your anger, your sadness, your shame, your guilt. And then that repressed anger can actually really ma manifest as something in your body. It could manifest as you feeling like super groggy, your adrenals are shot, your thyroid gland is not working. Like that's, that's Hashimoto. So Hashimoto yeah. is like the auto autoimmune illness of the thyroid. Right. So you know, it could really manifest as anything, but that's why it's so important to listen and be aware and be aware of the symptoms and yes. the things that you're experiencing. So whether that is fatigue or you're super overwhelmed and you can't really figure out like what, what's going on here? Like, why am I so overwhelmed? Yes. Or, you know, you're physically not able to, you know, do the things you used to do. Like you used to be yeah. able to do a workout. No, you can't anymore. Right. So a lot of times I think we're in the grind Yeah. And we end up just, you know, you're like, okay, well, this is just life. Like this is happening to me, you know, mm -hmm. and I just got to keep going. Like, what else can I do? I have kids and I have all these other things, but you don't yeah. realize that if you actually do get burnt out, which is what happened to me, yeah, you can't take care of anybody around you. Right. So, so I had to experience the extreme of being burnt out to then realize like, okay, this can no, never happen to anyone ever again. Yeah. And if you're in my sphere and if it is happening, then I want to stop it at all costs. Right. And teach people how to do that. So I help people accelerate their healing. Yes. And I really help people get in touch with themselves um, so that they can have a self-awareness. And a lot mm -hmm. of it is, you know, like the nervous system or stress response. Right. And then, and then also to kind of like self-realize, like you realize who you are and then develop a deep connection with yourself through these specific tools. Yeah. And we can get to the tools. And then at the end of the day, you, you begin to like visualize who you want to be and you bring that vision in and, yeah. um, and then you're able to like self-actualize where it's like you become who this person that you always dreamt of being and who you thought maybe you couldn't be. And right. which is really what happened to me because I, I, if about a year ago, I probably couldn't be on this podcast. Right. Realistically, I couldn't do it because I was too anxious. I was like a hot mess. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a hot mess. <laughs> And I didn't want that, but it kind of like, just, you know, it trickled in and it was just layered and it was my yeah. work life, personal life. I was going to school, got my master's. I even started a business during the process, like yeah. full on. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, 
a little bit of like overachiever personality. Yes. Yeah. You don't know how to get there. Like you can have all these things, but it's kind of figuring out how to get there and managing yourself and learning, yes. about, learning all the tools. So oh, that was a lot of information. <laughs> No, it's really good information. You know, a lot of times people don't realize that a lot of the aches and pains and the, the fogginess and not being able to focus, they bl blame it on, oh, you know, oh, it's because of, the, you know, I'm um, getting older or, you know, or this or that. And they make excuses up, but they don't realize that, you know, basically like 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. The more stress we are, the more we take on, you know, it, it slowly breaks down the walls of the immune system. And it's basically like opening the doors and saying, come on, illnesses, I'm open, I'm ready for you. Come on, come in, you know? And yes. people don't realize, you know, and I, I had talked to a, um, a friend of mine who was in Ayurveda and she, mm -hmm. you know, we were talking how, oh, uh, you know, I was explaining something to her and then she was like, and we were, we were going over some different things and we were talking about uh, different pains and, and then she was talking about shoulder pain and she was saying a lot of people, they, they relate shoulder pain to different things. And sometimes it's just because you're carrying too much weight on you. And, you know, and Dr. Brady, he did the, uh, um, the body code and he did the emotional code and he talked about how a lot of people are just given prescriptions or carrying different illnesses and pains and getting one thing after another over and over and over again and they had went to him you know like people go to you and they got to the root cause of what was really stemming all these different illnesses or pains and and they he they found ways to cope with it. And after they learned what it was and they realized, and then they learned coping skills, how to go get through it, you know, all these things started to just go away. And they, these yes. people started to live normal lives. And there's, there's so many testimonies out there about people talking about how they suffered for so long with different um, emotional and physical pain and, you know, and honestly, folks, you know, I did an article one time, I said, what's more, what's worse, the emotional pain or the physical pain? And it was a 50 50, because both are detrimental, you know, to yeah. live with emotional pain is just as bad as living with physical pain. And people carry that weight all the time. Yes. But and that, go ahead. Yes. And that I was just going to say that, like, even that emotional pain, again, like I said, it can transfer into physical pain. So it's almost yes. like, it's like, I understand why it was 50, 50 for some people. And I've, I've experienced it. It's like, um, I had like insane hip pain. Like I was holding so much like emotional pain in my hips yeah. as well as my neck and my traps. And, you know, I, I, I'm still working on it. I'm still working on releasing some of this stuff. And I always say that I'm not a perfect person. So yeah, <laughs> I like to talk about that because it's like, we have our ups and downs and we're only human beings. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the whole thing is we work on these things. And you build a result when you work on these things, you build a resilience. So for yes. example, if let's say you have a consistent practice, a consistent meditation practice, let's just say, mm -hmm. then you're better able to pick yourself back up. If let's say you do have a bad moment or let's say somebody does trigger you really badly. So, um, whereas if you didn't have a consistent practice, you'd probably be blowing up. You'd probably be, you know, these are all kind of like the hidden symptoms of, yeah. of not taking care of yourself so while right. some things can, can feel physical and like you really feel it that yeah. emotional load like you were saying is what we have to work on so that we can become this like way more resilient person who's who's better able to deal with things and like you know it's like you wake up lighter right yeah and then once you start processing these like core wounds um then you're better able to, you know, it's like, it's almost like that weight, you, you literally feel that weight lifting off of you. Yeah. And then once that weight lifts, then you'll start noticing like, oh, wow, like I do feel physically better. Like I can run a little bit longer or I'm better able to, I don't know, like I can take a yoga class and not suffer through it. And like, oh, like that hip pain is sort of like, it's dissipating a bit. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's important. These are all just signs right it's like signs from the universe however you want to call it and it's also signs and symptoms that our, our body is communicating with us yeah so none of it is bad it's really not bad it's actually a form of communication when we do get sick you know it's like mm -hmm. it's like cold and flu season i think just passed <laughs> i feel like people are still sick yeah but we're you know even then it's like if you're constantly getting sick it's a good indication like hey you might be under some pressure because right. 
you're not really fighting off the colds and the flus like you, you you'd be otherwise you know right so if you are this kind of like better version of yourself or your best self with a capital s as i as yeah. i talk about then you know you you will be less sick you will be less stressed and you'll be way more resilient and able to kind of like navigate the highs and the lows right so you know these are the things like you, you're always going to have a little bit of stress you're always yeah. going to have that but also stress is not always a bad thing it was actually made to protect us yes you know? so when you feel your heart racing like you don't have to be like oh well geez i'm so stressed and like you know, I just wish my body wasn't like that. It's not really like that. It's more about working with your stress response and working yes. with the nervous system. Right. So I work a lot on like mindset and yeah. becoming friends with your body because if if you can if you can befriend your body and really understand, yeah, then you start working in unison. And when I say like you as in like your soul, you I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe your listeners know or some don't, but it's like that inner wisdom, the inner. Mm-hmm. You, that person befriends your like physical body. Yes. That's when things start like really working and flowing. Yeah. Because otherwise, if there's a giant gap between who who you, you know, you want to be and then yes. like, feeling, that's kind of like you're almost like fighting yourself. Right. So, so in the beginning, you want to establish like, okay, like I see you, I feel you, like you're you're suffering a bit. It's okay. Yeah. And, and then moving from that place to, okay, like I can heal or I can take the steps and like, I do have the power, I feel empowered. So it's a lot of this like positive self-talk right. that we have to go through to get to this, to this place. It's so, so true. It's so true. And, and, you know, a lot of times people don't realize, but our heart and our intuition are, you know, we have to listen, you know, cause our, you know, I'm so into, you know, the spiritual realm and, and listening. Our body gives us signals all the time. And I always say the heart speaks to the brain and then the brain reacts to the, and, and sends messages to the body. And that's, we, you know, if, if something is not right, if we feel off or we have an intuition saying, oh, you shouldn't do that, you know, you know, yeah. maybe we shouldn't do that and think twice. Or if our leg is bothering us, well, maybe we're doing things that we're doing too much of, or we're not, you know, or maybe, you know, we're not taking care of ourselves the way we should. And we have to rethink about, okay, how have I been taking care of myself lately? What have I been doing differently than I was doing before? And like reevaluate, you know, the way we, our lifestyle is, and then think about the changes we can make. Yes. Yes. And my, my biggest advice, I mean, it's simple. I could, I could get into more complicated advice, but my biggest advice is having just a moment of silence. And I, I take advantage of my moments of silence and yeah. I, I'm not a mom, but I know that, um, you know, people with kids, you, you all struggle with moments of silence and having a moment to yourself. And like, I totally get it. Yeah. But that's why I take advantage of moments in the car. If I'm in the yeah. car, I'm like, Ooh, this is a moment. So yeah. I'll just sit there just for a moment. And sometimes it's nice. Cause if it's warm, you know, you'll, you'll like feel the warmth on your body or you'll feel the sunshine. And I'll just be quiet. And then I'll just like check in, like a little check in with myself. Yeah. And that's where it all starts. It's it's these little moments of silence. Or like, when else are we alone? In the right. shower, usually. <laughs> 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 you know, it's like you're 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 having like water rush up fall over you. It's a very relaxing and meditative feeling. And that c- can take you to a more meditative state. So I always my showers are meditative. I think of my, my best moments in the showers. I think yeah. of really creative ideas in the shower. Mm-hmm. I also think of really creative ideas, like right when I wake up, cause it's like, Oh, it's maybe quiet depending on, you know, your environment, yeah. Uh-huh. but yeah, taking advantage and then just listening to yourself. Like, like if you have these ruminating thoughts, like what are they, you know, yeah. what, what is weighing so heavy? What yeah. are you constantly thinking about? whether it's your finances, you know, these are all things in life. Like everyone's thinking about that. Everyone's a little worried and anxious. And like, how right. do you kind of change that narrative so that yes. it works for you and to your benefit? And then once you start the, this work, I think so many things come into your life. Like all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. Like I just met this really amazing person. Um, and like, if I weren't doing this work, I would never have met you and you're an right. incredible human being, you know? And yeah. these are all like gifts. So, so once you do the work, all of a sudden, like this momentum builds and you're like, wow, like I feel better. I almost want to spread this knowledge to everybody. Yeah. And, 
you become a new, a new person. And, and like I said, I was really like, really unwell. I, I, I basically, I couldn't get out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> My partner at the time had to pull me out of bed. Right. <laughs> and I was going to school. I was doing, you have no idea the, the amount of stuff I was doing. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm, I'm speaking at an engagement, like an entire women's summit. I never That's thought awesome. I could ever do that. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, well, yeah, and I, I'm doing podcasts now and, you know, I'm really putting myself out there. And these are all things I, I told myself I could never, I would yeah. never, and I could never. <laughs> right. And now you're doing it. <laughs> no, I'm doing it. But yeah, I don't know if you can relate to, to, to that at all. I, or... I could relate because I, I had gotten to a point where in my life where, you know, my own personal life, you know, my, you know, my, the stresses in my life, you just, the, the conditions I was dealing with, everything was starting to take over my life. And it was very hard. Every time I felt like I was moving three steps forward, I felt like I was getting knocked back two steps. And I kept feeling like I was getting, I was, I kept having to push myself off the floor and I refused to give up and I refused to give up at the same time, my body was wearing down and I would, and it gets to the point where you start feeling the pain pain emotionally and physically, you know, it could be very depressing. It could be, you know, you, you could yes. just, you know, you start to feel like, why, why, when is this going to yeah. stop? You know? And I, I'm sure there are many people out there, they get angry, they get, you know, they want to give up. They, you know, they get depressed, you know, um, they Good lose point. purpose. What is my purpose? If I have a purpose, why are all these things happening to me? And then I yeah. finally realized, you know, that, you know, my purpose, you know, once I, I started to learn how to cope with all my issues, I realized this was my purpose is I, now I've, I figured out how to cope with so many different things that were going on in my life. I wanted to share the wealth because during that time, people were helping me get to where the point I needed to. And then I felt it was me who had to continue that and uh, that legacy and help others, you know, because I learned so much through others and their stories and and their ways of coping with life and and different situations in their life. But the 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 journey wasn't easy, and I'll I'll admit the journey still isn't easy. You know, you you have your ups and downs, and if anyone ever says that their life is perfect and it's smooth sailing. You know, yeah. uh, I would say, look in the mirror and be honest with yourself because <laughs> <laughs> life is not smooth sailing for anybody. We have our ups and downs. Every day is a new day, but it's learning how to cope with these issues and learn how not to let these issues wear us down to the point where it's going to affect our mental or physical yes. health. And, yes. it, yeah. and, and so what is some of the, when you had Hashimoto's and, and yeah. you were going through all these things, yeah. did you realize right away that these issues were caused by the way you were living life or did it take a while for it to actually you know incorporate in your brain and say wait you know what i'm on the wrong track and you know all these things are a result or a symptom of the way i'm living my life so for i would almost say that for 10 years i was kind of clueless like i kind of knew i knew that there was this emotional component to what i was going through yeah but i was really focused on the physical component so mm -hmm. i i started doing yoga i started um i mean i was taking like herbal supplements i was seeing a bunch of naturopaths so yeah. i was trying to get to the root of the physical symptoms that i was experiencing yes but part of me was like well, I think I'm stressed. And let me tell you, <laughs> looking back, I was so stressed. I, I mean, but, but when you're so in something, it's yes. hard to understand what you're going through. You're kind of like, well, it's, I wake up the next day, I'm on repeat, repeat, repeat. There's yeah. no way. So that was my mentality. I was like, well, I can't, like, I can't get a divorce. I can't, like, I'm, I'm stuck with this person. And then yeah. I have to do this job. Like I have student loans. I have to, like everything was a have to, have to, have to. But 10 years later, after doing all this work and really getting to the root of it, I was yeah. like, wow, oh my gosh, so much of this is our emotional, what we bring emotionally. Yeah. And like, if we could just get to the bottom of that, yeah. and if we learn the tools, and if we yeah. could be consistent, then that's kind of like how you'll come out of it. And, and, and also to your point from before, I wanted to add that when you are feeling like really low and if any of your listeners are like, well, I feel horrible and I don't know how to get out of it. And it's really hard for me to mentally even think to myself, like, yes, I can change this or whatever. I, I always say like self-compassion, yeah. have compassion for yourself. And that is a really big 
healing tool because yes. when you just it's like putting your hands on your heart and just saying it's okay mm-hmm. like it's okay it's okay that I'm experiencing this yeah and I love and accept and forgive myself like yes. I think we truly have to learn how to do that for ourselves and then yes. suddenly when that happens all of a sudden like the guilt kind of goes where you're like okay like I can have my moments of silence like I'm allowed to meditate yeah um, I can love myself enough to do all these things because yes. I think we think that if we do some of this stuff it's wrong or it's selfish yeah um, and but it starts from that place of like self-forgiveness self-compassion um because we're so hard on ourselves especially women I know men are as well but especially women we're yeah. just like we internalize and overanalyze and then all of a sudden we're the bad guys all yeah. right and mm-hmm. you know it's okay. Like we can be the bad guy sometimes and then we can forgive ourselves and yeah. release that again, that heaviness and that weight. Cause that weight is what is actually pulling you down. And then yeah. these thoughts turn into feelings, which turn into physical symptoms, which is why when you think about something, all of a sudden your heart's racing, you're sweating, you know? Yes. So, so it's, it's, it's really interesting, but I, uh, I love going to the, the self-compassion part because we don't have that. Like, I don't know if people know how to do that anymore. Yeah. What are yeah. some ways that you would suggest to people like different techniques that maybe people could learn to, to rebuild that self-compassion for themselves, to be able to have compassion for themselves. And then once they have compassion for themselves, how they can exemplify and, and maybe ha- show compassions to others, because sometimes it's very hard to be compassionate to others when you're not compassionate to yourself. That's very true. So it's kind of like what I just described. So I, I could just give like a concrete yeah. example. So you mm-hmm. can put your hands on your heart and you could just say, it's okay. It's okay. And then you, you meditate on that feeling right. and then you imagine sort of like either a golden light or like a yeah pinkish light. I sometimes I say pinkish greenish, depending on like auras, chakras and all that. Yes, yes, yes. But you just imagine that feeling expanding of like forgiveness. Yeah. And then you can imagine that feeling also like going through into your whole body. So I do right. a lot of like guided meditations. I teach people how to like, literally heal themselves like to yeah. be your own position in a way right and then other than that like you can give yourself a 20 second hug you could literally wrap your arms around yourself and just you know it's it's awkward it's cheesy. I love it I love it <laughs> I love it 20, 20 seconds 20 seconds yeah. you hold and then it's almost like we're just relearning how to it's like reparenting you know yeah mm-hmm. because so much of what's happened to us is is from our childhood yes we weren't loved or seen or something happened there you yeah. know and we have to kind of like go back in so there's a lot of you know the the inner child meditations you can look them yeah. up on youtube um it's it's challenging I, I always recommend doing it with someone yeah uh, but but yeah it's like it's like healing the inner inner child and showing that little person the little child in you the love that they never got yeah I know it's, it's, it's if this sounds wooey it's not really wooey it's it not works. it's not it, it works, works. it yeah. does it really and, does and then otherwise um you know I do like affirmations I also mm-hmm. I do something called EFT tapping it's called emotional freedom technique tapping and you tap on different meridian points so right now I'm tapping on the top of my head and then in between the brows and then the side of the eyes, then under the eyes, under the nose, right under the lips, mm-hmm. the collarbone, like right beneath the collarbone, and right. then right under the arm by the bra line. Okay. The and then you can tap on your wrist. Um, and then you you do that, and that's supposed to calm calm you down. And then you can say affirmations like, I love myself, I accept myself. And 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 so and you'll go through that and, yeah. and you'll feel like maybe it feels funny. Like maybe you're just not resonating, but Mm -hmm. allowing the discomfort and then you can change up the words. You could say, maybe I don't feel it right now, but I know I will feel that right now. I I learn how to love myself and I'll take it one step at a time. So it's like, it's like you're being really honest with yourself. So you're not, cause, cause affirmations, I feel like people are like, I, I read affirmations and I'm like, okay, (laughs) <laughs> I can't, you know, cool. I'm going to be a millionaire in a year. Like, you know, <laughs> you read the affirmation, you're like, I don't know about that. Yeah, exactly. But, 
but it's like you know making it so that it it feels and sounds good to you so yeah I think being authentic in the way that you do love yourself like if yeah. something is resonating don't don't do it but but test it out like be curious and, and learn how to learn these things and what about you do you know any like do you do, you do any self-love practices or anything I noticed when I started to do meditation, things started to change a lot for me. I use, I, I love to use the chakra bowls with my meditation. So focusing on the sounds, the different vibrations of the different vo- uh, bowls, you know, each, each bowl represents a different part of the chakra. So I would pull out and focus on the, on the parts that I felt were uh, un- that weren't uh, aligned. And I could tell because at, at, when you start to take care of yourself, when you start to understand who you are as a person, and that goes into the spirituality that we were talking about earlier, you start to know what is out of line and what is what is balanced. And then I would focus on the parts that I thought needed healing. And I would take those, those chakra bowls and I would just slowly vibrate the sounds and close my eyes. And then I would just imagine, like you said, the gold or the, or a a common color. And I would, I would think something like that, or I would think of a dove and I would think that the dove is taking all the negativity, all the things that were bothering me lately, and it's putting it on its wings and it's going to fly away. And oh, then, beautiful. and then I would just sit there and as I was doing it afterwards and I would slow my breathing very slow, take deep breaths in, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And afterwards I felt different. I felt, I felt focused. I felt aligned. I felt, I felt more, I guess you could say at whole at, yes. as a person. And then I, I always loved yoga. The yoga was always, I loved doing yoga because it was just, it, it was just, it just made you, the circulation, the movements, the poses, it, it really hits all the different parts of your body. So not only health wise, but mentally, it really, it, it, it clears your mind. It, it helps you focus better. It makes you see things in a whole different light in a more peaceful and serene manner. And you could do it anywhere. There's so many different poses. You know, they show you poses that you could do in the car. I wouldn't suggest doing it while you were driving, but you know, when maybe if you're in the passenger seat, you could do, you know, they have like breathing exercises and different movements with your arms that you could do. And, you know, when I incorporated meditation and yoga and positive thinking, I started to anything negative that happened to me, I would pull out the positive. And I would I wouldn't focus on the negative. And I felt like that helped me get through a lot in life. I don't know how, how do you feel about positivity? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think it's, I mean, again, it's like everything you think becomes an emotion, which becomes your life. Like it's, yeah. it's really interesting how important it is. And, and, you know, we have all these like subconscious beliefs. So it's like really have to work. Some people really have to work on it. Yeah. And you really have to get yourself, like if you have negative beliefs, okay, get yourself to like baseline, like where you're just like neutral. And then from there you can start building like the positive thinking but yeah I think it's really everything it's like our belief systems what we think it's every it's everything it's it's what yes. what we use once we've like processed some of our emotions it's like what you use to rebuild your your life or you know and become who you are but you you'll notice people who are positive are just different yeah <laughs> it's almost like they're emitting a light like yeah like people, I mean I don't want to like to my own horn but when people <laughs> talk to me they're like okay, like you're on something. Like, yeah. you're on something. <laughs> but it's not like, I'm not like screaming. I'm very calm. Yeah. Um, but it's like, they're like, whoa, like something's a little different here, you know? And yeah. again, I'm not, I'm not perfect. You know, I have my moments. Yeah. Um, my family knows do. that very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like, it's like, once you start, I think it's important. It's, it's with like the affirmations and the positive thinking. I. It's like, it's almost everything. It's almost, yeah. yeah. So so if you decide to, you know, do affirmations with like the EFT tapping, I just explained I like or that. Just write affirmations. Like I, I mean, I don't have it at this moment, but on my laptop, I usually have a sticky note and it's my affirmation of like the week. Yeah. So I'll write something like, you know, I'm the, like, I want to help thousands of people. Like it's, it's yeah. really, and I, and I will, you know, and it's like, right. so, so uh, it's, it's stuff like that. And then that translates into like self-belief, you know, yes. you, you start like developing like way more confidence in yourself and you know confidence varies but yeah I think it's something that we should always work on right That's right like pushing our own limits and like growth and um so allowing yourself to kind of like become that person and right. push yourself and to then take action yeah so 
So yeah, I, I a hundred percent agree. And by the way, when you said the the dove meditation, I was like, oh my gosh, that's, it, it made me feel like caught. You just explained it. And I was like, whoa, that's mm-hmm. yeah. So I can't even imagine like doing it yourself. It's, it, 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 it makes, it makes you feel like it's flying away. It's releasing from you. And like, what I loved about your, the, the tapping method is that, you know, when you repeat something you keep saying it over and over and over again, you keep doing it repetitively, like, and you start making it part, you know, a part of your daily lifestyle. When you say things over and over again, you mentally start to believe it. And you start to, if you're telling yourself, I'm, I'm a great person, I can do this. I'm this, I am that, you know, you know, you know, uh, I, I, I have good intentions. I'm a good person. You know, I, you know, I'm a forgiven person and and you keep saying it over and over again, you start to believe it. And you, you start to say that this is a part of me, you know, it's, it's uh, so it's like, you know, just like if someone has grows up in a negative family, if negative things are said to them, by the time they grow up, they, they believe those things that were set to them. But the same thing goes to like positive, affirm, you know, like when you, the tapping, when you say positive things and you're tapping different parts of your, of your, your, your body, yes. you're not only relaxing yourself, but you're, you're creating a new you, it seems like also. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's almost like a rewiring that needs to be done because we have a lot of these like subconscious beliefs that we've, you know, it's, it's stuff from childhood, like something yeah as little as like your family, you know, struggling around money. Like it, I I can't even imagine how common that is. Yeah. (laughs) And that belief system is like embedded into your DNA. You're like, yeah, okay, well it's, it's a struggle to make money. So then all of a sudden you're struggling to make money and you're like, what's happening to me. Right. Then once once you have an awareness of it, then you're like, Oh, like, okay. I can like, I, why is this happening? Like, why do I have that belief? Like, Right. I, don't, I can let this belief go. I can have a totally different belief. Like, right. It's easy for me to make money. Like money is energy. Yeah. Money flows through me. Like it's, it's all these like things that you start kind of like, you know, yes. rewiring. And, and, and if you're tapping on the meridian points, then it's like an extra dose of like, you know, it, it really works. It really works. It's, it's um scientifically backed. Like people with PTSD and depression use EFT tapping to heal themselves. Oh, really? So, Yes. Yes. You should, you should look it up and your, your yeah. listeners should look it up as well. Um, and yeah, that's some of the the work that I do to help people rewire at the, like the latter part of the program. And it's most people are obsessed with it. And it's, I do it almost every day, almost every day I tap because hey, I'm going to start do, that. Yeah. How? I think I'm going to start it because yeah, you should. should. Because just l- looking at you do it, it just, it just, it just made me feel so calm and it just made me yeah. feel, and then the, I just did a couple as you were doing it. And I just, it made me feel very relaxed. And then if I was in my room by myself and I was just saying specific things to myself yeah. over and over again, I think that would be so calm. It would be like a, a mindset technique in a yes. sense. Yes. I, I was recording my very first podcast. This was a couple of weeks ago. And I was like deathly nervous. I think my body was having like some <laughs> allergic reaction, <laughs> like, a lot of allergic reaction to to pushing myself. Like it was really yeah. like really hard for me to do this thing. Yeah. And, and I just I went outside. I was in nature. Yeah. Um, and I just I didn't even care who was looking at me. I, I've I've released that shame yeah. as well. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, maybe you can ask me what I'm doing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I just started. I started tapping. I was like, I'm meant to be here. Like I'm mm-hmm. supposed to do this. I'm supposed to share my story. Right. People need to hear this. Like I want yes. to help people heal. And it's, it's the truth. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And then I, I like, I aced, I mean, aced, I don't know if that's the right word, but I, I did like an incredible job. The host was like, this is your first podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> yeah. So So it's just, it really like in an instant changes you the same way, like breath work in an instant changes your, or, you know, these things really work in the moment. Right. (laughs) So people need to understand the power of these tools and like, it's not hokey. It's not wooey. It's really something that could totally propel you in whatever direction you want to move in. Yes. I I don't think people understand unless they start practicing it, you know, and, you know, Yeah. Because like when I started to practice it, I, my whole life turned around, but sometimes when you talk to people who don't really practice it, they somewhat understand or they somewhat believe, but until you practice it, you'll see 
you everything starts to change and then you start to really your intuition gets stronger you start to you you really start to understand your your the way your mind works the way your body works what you know what works for your body you know physically wise you know i you know what spiritually you know you you feel like i was telling you i know when i'm certain out of line with certain things and i have to work on it and then i can hear my intuition saying take time for yourself slow down you know and and i think that's one thing people have to listen to too because you talk about burnout and a lot of yeah. times people you know, I've talked about this with many people, they start where they don't really realize they're going into burnout. And then all of a sudden the little symptoms show. But the question is, when do you start listening to those symptoms and how do you stop it? Turn? Because, you know, like we're talking financially, there's so many people yeah. struggling financially. And then you have people who are just obsessed with just wanting to make, they get to that great point in their life and they still want more. And then they burn themselves out even more so when they don't have to. So you have the people who are trying to just make it the people who've made it and just want more but either or they're both burning themselves yeah. out yeah and, you know what do you look for when you start to you know when when yeah. and then how do you stop it before it gets too late yeah I think I think it's all possible I think it's all possible it's just how you choose to get there because I've been thinking about this a lot lately I'm the type of woman I want it all I I, I should <laughs> I don't know if it's me or if it's all women. No, I'm a high achiever too. So I get okay. you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like, I want it all. I want the business. I want the coaching business. I want, you know, yep. uh, I don't even know. Like I want to travel. Like I want, I, you, you know, want to get to the want, stars. I hear yes, you. The stars, the stars. But it's, it's like the difference between burnt out Serena and new Serena is how I'm getting there. Yeah. So for example, yesterday, I mean, I worked like, all day and it's it's like something that's exciting but also the energy that comes with like some work that can feel stressful is draining right it's like yes it's like you can sometimes do things in a in a happier way or like yes in a mindset that's more energetic yes um, yesterday was not one of those days for me so I I just went to the spa I'm like I'm gonna you know I'm just gonna take an hour I'm gonna yes. go get the sauna and then I felt like a million dollars after right but now I know that I, I have to do these things and, and yes. when I was there, I was doing my breath work and like doing all the stuff but it's it's um it's it's difficult to catch the symptoms, but I think we're we need to tap into our intuition. And yeah, if we sense something's wrong, then it's like it's like we have to, you know, we have to do something about it. We can't yeah. just like sit and ignore. Exactly. So, I feel like we're in a interesting time period right now, right? It's like mm -hmm. there's a lot of self-growth happening. Um, I think people are waking up. Some people are kind of asleep still, but like yeah, yeah. a lot of people are waking up, you know? Yes, they and are. I think this is our time to be like self healers, to learn what we need to do to heal ourselves because sorry, but the medical system failed me personally. And yeah. I know that it can help people. Mm -hmm. um, of course, like I've, I've used antibiotics. It's literally saved my life and my throat at a certain time. Yeah. In my life. Right. But, um, but I feel like I have my healing has happened because of me. Like I, right. you know, I've accessed the, like the natural doctors or I've yes. accessed, you know, the different tools I've done all the research. I've, it's like, I've tested everything on myself yes. and learned, you know, um, mm -hmm. but there, there are so many tools out there. Like people don't have to suffer the way they used to. They could just right. look online and know that, you know, they have to work on their gut health. They have yes. to eliminate like inflammatory foods. Like all this stuff is out there, you know, and yes. then there are like so many coaches, like people to help. And, and, um, I think it's just like, don't suffer in silence, like mm -hmm. talk about it. Right. And then there's no shame in, in feeling bad or feeling sick or feeling depressed. Like these are normal things. Like I, I'm not trying to say depression is normal. It's, we definitely want to come out of depression, but feeling sadness, like these are normal things, right. You know, feeling stress. It's, it's a normal thing. It's just how we handle it and how we yes. come out of it exactly and building that toolbox like yes. you know you want to you want to build a life that's like you know more joyous like you want to have vitality you want to feel like you can run a mile when you're a mile a mile plus but mm -hmm. you can run a marathon let's say when you're in your 70s or 80s who knows like and right. beyond yes well i think it's important to understand like it's possible you know we don't have to like stop living at age like after retirement or whatever people say exactly so, so it's interesting there's like an awakening happening and it, the only thing I'm I'm noticing though like 
humanity is super burnt out. And, yeah. and I talk to people who are burning out or burnt out. And I'm like, you're not doing anything about it. Like, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to feel better, you know? But I do see other people like taking sabbaticals, like taking the trip. You know, sometimes people feel guilty to go on the trip. Yeah. Um, you know, even though they have like, all sorts of vacation hours that they've accrued. You know? Right. I'm, like, mm -hmm. I'm taking the vacation. Like mm -hmm. that's not okay. Like you need right. to change that. So you know, it's it's it comes down to to you, like what you think of yourself. There's a lot. It's it's a lot of like layering of different things. Yeah. But mostly mindset and you know working working on that. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I, I think it's so good for people to even have like gratitude in their lives because you, you know, you see people always, I want, I want, I want, well, you know, be, have gratitude for the little things in life. Cause sometimes you don't realize how lucky you are until those things are taken away from you, you know, and then you realize how important they were and how significant they were in your lives. You know, so I always say too, gratitude is always important. Mindset is huge. Like you mentioned, you know, there's so many times when they did studies, when people became older and one passed away and then their spouse passes away six months later and it's the mindset, it's, it's the depression. It's, it's not knowing how to change that mindset and focus on what could be for the next five years or what could be for the next 10 or 15 years, whatever, you know, but some people put themselves into that depression and they, you know, that's where it, it is. We could all feel sad, but, you know, don't get yourself into that hole where you can't climb out. And that's, that's, you know, the most important factor. Yeah. Yeah mental health is is literally wealth mental yes. health your health is your wealth yeah especially your mental health like if you are feeling depressed like get help go to yeah. a therapist go mm -hmm. find a coach I, like it's it's so important and oh, you know after the sure. pandemic i think there's a lot of repressed emotion you know yeah. repressed stress and stuff that's bubbled up to the surface or is bubbling up to the surface so I find it to be all to be so, so like fascinating, but at the same yeah. time, like, where did we go so wrong where mental health was put like on, I, on I, the bottom I, of the barrel? I think I, I know why. Um, and my friend, my best friend and I were talking about this mental health sometimes doesn't show. You're, no. you're just, I can be like severely depressed right now. And I can yeah. just be like, Oh, that's basically who I was. What am I saying? I, I, back in the day when I was really burnt out, people couldn't, they had no idea. I had to be like, I'm suffering. I have a million food allergies. Like I can't eat this. I can't do this. Like I barely got up today. I have to leave the party early. Yeah. Sorry. I can't socialize that much anymore. Like people were like, Whoa, like, Holy moly. And then yeah. it's like some people have an aversion to talking about stuff like that, you know, but you know, it's, it's like, I think you, you just have to like, you have to talk about it. You have to you talk do. about it. And, and just because it doesn't show doesn't mean it's not there, you know? Exactly. And that's what people have to keep in mind. Cause I think people, if they don't see it, they don't realize that people, you know, people could be very crude to other individuals and there's a lot of stigmatism and labelism out there. And just because someone doesn't show that something is wrong, you know, you should always treat somebody with respect and courtesy because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You don't know what's going on. There are so many people that have in invisible disabilities or diseases or a mental illness and it, you, they look fine on the outside but on the inside every it's like a tornado going on you know yeah. so it's like people really have to stop and think and and be more respectful and I think you know in our society we've lacked a little respect lately you know yes, and, yes, and I've do. seen you and know too many go ahead and kindness and kindness yes and you know we have to really be kind and respectful towards others because you don't know and you can't judge others until you walk through their journey in life you know and you shouldn't even have to judge others you know judge yourself you know that's the only person you should be judging is yourself you know yes. or judge anybody else you know yes. And, you know, I, I think in today's society, we have to remember that I think is one of our last things that we talk about is that people have to really be courteous to others and, and be respectful and, and be kind to others, because you don't know who that other person is, what they're going through. And even if you know them, you might not know them as well as you think. There's so many times even celebrities have committed suicide and nobody realized it. I've been on advisory boards and 
people who were their 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 sons or their parents were going through depression and they committed suicide and they didn't even know and they you know they were shocked and they felt responsible because they didn't know but the the signs usually aren't there you know and uh so people always have to be kind and i think everybody should have a coach I, you know or everybody should have a therapist you know whatever you need either you have a coach or a therapist or you have both you know i think everybody benefits from having a coach in their life definitely and, and ask the people around you how they're doing. Like, yeah, like men, especially like men, ask your male friends how they're doing. And like, yeah, really. And if they don't tell you, try a little bit, you know, like, exactly. Get them to open up a little bit because exactly. I think we need more men who are open and vulnerable. And like, it, it'll just, it'll help society as a whole. Like women yeah. will feel better. Like everyone will feel better. And then also like get in touch with nature. Like we're not separate from nature. We're like right. we are all the same it's like yes so, so even when you did your dove meditation I was like oh my god like that it made me feel whole and I know you know what I mean yeah but it, I know what you mean it's like that wholeness like you are your friends you are your family like we're, we're to get we're in on this like yeah stop separating yourself from right from humanity and the planet like exactly like let's start working together again because yeah. I think I think like you know America you know, all this stuff going on. It's like, we're so separate from one another with our yeah. like, homes and like, you don't even talk to your neighbor and, you know, right. hopefully you do, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, really asking people what, what's going on, have these conversations, like open up just a little bit more. You don't have to spill your whole life story, but right. just come with an openness and also come with like some understanding If someone seems like they're having a bad day. There is a reason for it. If somebody's yeah. like has insane road rage, like you better believe that person's probably stressed. I'm not saying it's okay, but right. it's like, it's like, you know, just have a little bit more compassion. Like you, yes. and it, it all starts from you. If you're, if yeah. you start building this like self-compassion muscle, like it's okay. Like I forgive myself. Then you're going to be so compassionate with other yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So and then all of a sudden, like, you know, you're like, wow, like this life is cool. Like you, you'll look at like nature and you're like, wow, this yeah. is we're together like this is not we're not separate right so it's it's a real like like a, a holistic mindset shift holistic yes. uh, and then 100%. compassion for basically every person you come across like yes. any person, a child <laughs> yeah right? compassion mm -hmm. for a dog a compassion for anyone anyone in your family even people that you might be angry with you know exactly it's like holding that like okay they're probably going through something like, mm -hmm. like I could let it go like I, I might not forget what's going on but I right. can like let it go let it go yes yeah. and then hopefully we can talk about it exactly a hundred percent yeah. Now, if we had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to, you know, put together a couple of takeaways, what would you like to emphasize to the listeners today from what we spoke about? Oh my God. We talked about so much, Stacey. I know. <laughs> well, maybe we can pick out a few <laughs> things. Those are a few things. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um, all right. So I think the mindset thing for sure, yes. mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, how do you build a positive mindset? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that starts with you. That starts with you. And yes. it starts with self-compassion for yourself mm -hmm. and forgiveness. Right. And then, then you start building the tools mm -hmm. and the tools could be meditation. It could be tapping. It could be breath, breath work. So, so the tools are kind of like endless and you figure out what you do with, with the tools that you have. And then at the end of the day to, I think, express yourself because yeah. that expression will help other people express themselves mm -hmm. and to understand that like mental health is is wealth yes. and, and health is wealth and and investing in yourself is investing in yourself and other people around you so um i think those are the big takeaways did, did i miss something I'm sure no i think you you hit it up on the button those are very good takeaways and now for what different services do you provide for you for uh, for your clients so I have a group coaching program as well as an individual coaching program. Mm -hmm. The group coaching program is only for women and we have, it's like a six week immersive program and it's called transforming burnout. So even if you're not burnt out, the program is completely doable because it teaches you how to like, um, again, it's, it's aware self-awareness and then yes. you move into self-actualization and self-realization. And then you pull in this like a vision of you that you want to be and you yeah. become this like more joyous 
um, and healthy and vi uh, vivacious person. Yes. Uh, the version of yourself, at least. Right. And then, um, and then the one on one coaching is essentially the same thing, but it's more curated to you specifically. So if let's say you're, you don't want to do group coaching, yes. which I, I've been there, sometimes I like individual coaching. Um, and then you can work with me one on one. And then men could work with me one on one. Oh, I love it. I love it. And where can people find you? So I'm on Instagram at bewellbyserena dot, oh, not dot com, at bewellbyserena. And then my website is bewellbyserena.com. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing, Serena. I, I, this conversation has just blew me out of the water. I, oh, I'm so happy. Yeah. I know it really was amazing. And I feel your energy. You're like so kind and so <laughs> like cool. I can't wait to dive into more of your, your podcast episodes. Oh, thank you. I, you know, I, I think we need more people like you that you really emphasize on self-care, self-love, um, you working on our emotions, you know, mentally and, and working on the physical aspects. And it's not just about, you know, not feeling well and, and run into the doctor and say, Oh, I have an ache. Well, you know, let's, let's wait and let's think about why is my body not hundred percent? What in my life has, have I changed lately? Is this has to do with me and my lifestyle or does this have to do with an actual medical condition and what's the root cause you know there's so many factors to take into and I tell people you know don't just rush to the doctor once you have a symptom you know wait a couple of days and try to figure it out and, and then if it persists or it gets worse of course go to the doctor you yes. know um yeah I'm I'm all for you know I'm integrated medicine and I'm yes. all for you know yeah, but you know, a lot of times things can be helped naturally. And, you know, and a lot of times there are met a lot of medications out there that can do more harm than good. So, but it's so important to take care of ourselves mentally and physically and spiritually. And I feel that, you know, in today's society, we all need to just take a step back and really, you know, breathe in that air and, you know, look at the beautiful sunset and look at the ocean and listen to the waves and enjoy life because, you know, we, we don't know what the next day may bring. And I think people take that for granted too. We never know what tomorrow may bring. So let's live today and enjoy what we have in the presence. It's so true. And and like you said, the, the gratitude, like gratitude for everything you just mentioned. Yeah. And um, I agree. And and like just one last thing, I'd say gut gut health, like yes. your, what, you, what you feed into your body. A hundred percent. That's a whole new show. Yeah. <laughs> we can do a whole show on that maybe we will <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we should <laughs> oh for gosh. sure yes but gut, gut health is is definitely a huge part of it and that definitely could be another hour for sure easily <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well oh, Serena, this has been amazing thank you so much for coming yeah. on the show i really enjoyed you, your company and everything you had to say you, you're just an amazing woman Oh my gosh, you're amazing as well. And I'm, I feel blessed to be on your podcast. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. Thank you, my dear. Thanks.